Hi, you're listening to Kate here, and today I'm going to talk about five awesome ideas for decorating a journal or planner cover. Now, why do you need five ideas for decorating a planner cover? It's because it's something that's used every day. It needs to be sturdy, but still pretty and a bit sparkly because I'm doing it. And it also needs to be flat. So the decorating ideas need to be a little bit creative so that you still get a really interesting cover without all of the 3D embellishments that we might normally put on something else. Now I'm going to use these five ideas to create this journal cover. Uh-huh. Yep. That bright, that pretty. <laughs> so come with me and look at the five ideas I've got for you to create something like this for yourself. So let's take a look at those five ideas for decorating Traveller's Notebook covers. Now I'll make sure that they're nice and simple, but each of these is something that you can do that'll make your cover look amazing. Now use these ideas alone or combine them like I have for something really stunning. I'm going to be using the Jane Davenport Canvas Butterfly Journal and some of these gorgeous little Jane Davenport paints. Now this is a great little set because the colours are lovely and it comes with a brush and a stencil, so you kind of get a couple of freebies. Now, I'm also going to be using some golden fluid acrylics and a few other bits and pieces. But before we start, you'll need to take the middle elastic and any of the inserts out of your notebook. Then give it a really good coat of gesso so your paints have a nice base to stick to. Now, once that gesso is dry, we're right to start with our first interesting notebook decorating idea. I'm going to start with some paints and some sprays, maybe even a little Liquitex ink. So I've got those gorgeous Jane Davenport acrylics, some golden fluid acrylics, and a little Liquitex. And of course, I might add in some of my Lindy's. So let's paint and spritz. Now I've used these golden fluid acrylics before, so I know that they work really well with water. For the most part, all you need to do is give them a little spray. If you get any little blobs of paint that haven't disintegrated in the middle, just either dab them off with a paper towel or give them a bit more water. Now I don't want this to be too liquidy, so I've chosen to dab mine off. And then of course just tilt and move the journal around so you get some really cool run marks from your paint. If you'd like to keep the colours bright, then dry with a heat gun between each colour. If you'd like to get a little blending going on, then add more than one colour probably only two at a time, and then dry. Now the next colour I'm going to add is this beautiful lilac-y, lavendery colour from Jane Davenport. Now this is a much thicker paint than the fluid acrylics, so I'm using a little paintbrush just to mix that paint into the water. Now if you get too much water, dab it off with a paper towel. You'll notice I pretty much have that paper towel sitting beside me and dabbing constantly, just so it doesn't get too wet. Once you're happy with how the colours look and how the pattern looks, dry it off with that heat gun and we're ready to add a little bit more colour. Now for the last few colours of paint, I'm going to add a bold bright yellow and a really hot pink. Now you can add these at the same time if you'd like some interesting orange colours or if you'd like to keep the colours really fresh, dry between each colour. You can see that I'm leaning over and blowing on the paint there just to encourage it in the direction I'd like it to go. Now, you can do this or tilt, uh, but blowing gives some interesting results. Now, with the pink, I'm trying to make sure I don't let it take over because it's a very strong colour. And the other thing you need to remember is at this point, don't cover the entire background. Leave some space for other options. Now the next thing I'm doing is adding a little water over my background and that's going to do two things. It'll cause some of those edges to bleed and run so I'll get some pastel versions of my colour and also when I flick on my Lindy's like I'm doing now it means instead of getting really tight little spots I'm going to get this beautiful sort of wishy-washy watercolour effect. Now I'm adding two colours of Lindy's here time travel teal and I'll put the other one in the comments and maybe a little Liquitex ink. Now this brown could easily take over or if you add it lightly enough it can just add some depth to the colours. I'm going for depth so we'll see how we go here. Add a little water to make those colours run and then I'm going to blot with a paper towel. 
Now the paper towel I've chosen to use has ridges. So as I blot, I'm also getting a little pattern, which is seriously cool. Now the next idea we're looking at is stenciling. This is fantastic because if you use a medium like just generic paint, you can get beautiful designs but still lay dead flat. So what I'm going to do is be a bit clever about this. I'm going to use the same colors for my stenciling that I've already used on the background. And this serves two purposes. So it'll break up any of those background colors that are looking like too much of a blob. But it also means that my colors will remain consistent and coordinating because the paint that I'm using in its concentrated form will just look like a darker, a darker version of what I've already got on the background. Super simple, really clever because it doesn't add any extra colors in so we've got room for a little bit of additional stuff later and it helps break that background up plus add a bit of visual interest. Now the other thing I'm doing is for each stencil I'm using, I'm only using one color. So for this fish scale stencil, I'll just use blue and then I'll move on to the next stencil. So for the punchinella, I'm going to be using the pink. Now you'll notice that I'm adding the pink, for example, over the blue or the yellow or the white. Sometimes I'll even add it back over the top of another pink, but it will always be a lighter version so it stands out. I'm going to finish my stenciling by adding some purple stars and I'm going to add these over almost all of the canvas front just to give something a little bit different. Our next idea is stamping with paint. Now this is a lot easier than you may first think. There's a few tricks to it. Number one, use a nice bold stamp. Anything too fine and it's just going to make a mess. So I've got this gorgeous text stamp from Donna Downey. Next, make sure you've got your paint on a flat surface and then just stamp into it. I'm just using my nonstick craft mat. Now, you'll see that this gives a somewhat imperfect result, but that's completely perfect for this journal cover project. Now, I'm just going to add this in a few different areas. You can choose to stamp the entire stamp or just parts of it. Now, if this wasn't text, you could even turn it upside down. So if this is a little flower or a geometric design, you could vary the direction that you're stamping in. But because this is text, even though it's not completely recognizable, I'm trying to keep it so that at least it's sort of half the right way up. Now, make sure that you wash this stamp clean the minute you've finished because the paint can get dried in all the little nooks and crannies and it will make your stamped image afterwards not so great. This next idea is lots of fun, but you need to be a little bit brave. We're going to draw or doodle. So I'm going to use the Jane Davenport paint markers and a little bit of a glossy paint mixture I've cooked up and put in a fine liner applicator. All I can say here to guarantee success is test, test, test. Do not do anything on your journal cover that you haven't tested on a piece of cardboard first. There is nothing worse than having a paint marker blow out on your project. Really, there's nothing you can do when that happens other than try and mop it up with a paper towel. So make sure you've tested it and tried it first. The same thing for the fine line applicator. Because this is a very liquidy paint mixture in here, things can go wrong really quickly. So absolutely test it, test it, test it. Try writing, test the pressure, see how hard you have to squeeze. Because if you have a mistake in black on your journal cover, it's going to stay there. Now, all I'm doing is using my paint markers to outline a few of my designs and add a few little dots and doodles. Nothing earth shattering or even particularly artistic. I'm just having a little play and adding a few extra elements just to make it a little bit more interesting. Sometimes I'll use outlines, sometimes I'll draw my own patches of little circles or designs. It's really up to you. Now the other cool thing you can do is blend some of that paint out with your fingertip, which is what I'm doing with the sort of beigey creamy colour. And this just helps colour the background without leaving any lines. So it's a really great way to add a bit of blended colour on the background. Now, next we're going to add a little drama. Technically, this is not one of the five steps, but I think you'll agree it really helps make the journal cover. 
all I'm doing is adding some just random circles in different sizes. I'm using a circle stencil just as a little cheats way to get these correct and just a black paint marker just to create the circles. All you really need to decide are which are the interesting bits of your journal that you'd like to highlight. Make sure these are inside the circle because this is where your eye will be drawn and it's what you're going to see really. The rest of it will sort of fade into the background a bit but the bits that are inside these circles, they're the bits that you're going to be focusing on. So make them interesting. Now before you go any further, close up your journal cover and just make sure it looks like you want it to. Make sure that your circles are sort of in a good spot. Make sure there's a bit of interesting stuff on the front and the back before moving on. Now next we're going to use my secret weapon, which is nickel azo gold. It doesn't look like much when you put it on a piece of craft mat or a palette, but believe me, this color is like liquid gold. Watch what happens when I use it. Seriously, it is beautiful. Now, the key to making this look its best is a little bit of layering and a water brush. With the water brush, you can apply it in varying strengths um, so that you can get a beautiful dark color and also wash it right out into the surrounding area. This color, and I'm really not quite sure why, I'm positive there's some amazing arty color scientific explanation makes all of the other colors look that much brighter more vibrant i don't know if it's because it's the sort of the golden tone to it um, but with the turquoise the purple the yellow and the pinks that i've used it really enhances everything else so just wait until i'm finished you'll see exactly what i mean so all i'm going to do is add it in a more concentrated um, paint more concentrated color towards the actual circle and then blend it out into my background but making sure it's not in a weird ring or halo make sure it's sort of abstract in a little bit rough around the edges now as I paint with this you'll notice that I end up getting several puddle, puddles of color all in varying depths and amounts of water that I've added to it and I just keep going back to these with my brush as I need them don't think about it too much. Just kind of do it on instinct and see how you go. Now you can work with a wet paper towel here and if any of it is too dark or just doesn't quite look right, if you blot it quickly enough with the paper towel, you can remove that color without removing the color from the background. So just work slowly and just enjoy, have fun and really see what that color can do. Now I've added the color around all of my circles and a little bit towards the edges of the journal, just so it doesn't look quite so strange and like I've got just the circles colored. So I added a little bit to the edges as well. I've used the same technique everywhere I've added it and blotted with the paper towel if it gets too dark or it looks like it's taking over from those other colors. The key is not to make halos around the circles, but to sort of blot and make abstracty looking patterns so it fits in the rest so it fits in with the rest of the colors and the rest of the pattern on the journal. It's amazing what a difference this one color can make to the look of the entire thing. You'll notice it makes all those other colors stand out and look so much brighter. And I haven't done anything else, just added that one beautiful nickel azo gold. And it really does bring the whole thing together. Now, if you'd like to add any darker areas, wait till it's dry a little bit and then go back in and add a second layer, of darker, stronger color to really accent those circles and give it a bit of depth. You don't have to do this step, but I think you'll agree it makes it look that much better. We're on the home stretch now. Now, one of these last ideas is to add some almost illegible handwriting. <laughs> if you've got bad handwriting, this technique is perfect for you. Now I just have some black paint mixed with a little bit of uh, gloss medium, uh, nice and runny, in this little bottle here. So when my black paint dries, it's nice and raised and glossy. And you really need to test this before you start writing with it because you absolutely cannot <laughs> get rid of it once it's on here. I'm also outlining the circles in a very scruffy manner just to give them a little bit more depth and a little bit more presence on the page. And last, but definitely not least, a little touch of bling. 
Now, this is another one of those things where it's surprising how much of a difference it can make to the overall look. I'm using some of the same Lindy's Stamp Gang spray that I added right in that very first step, but I'm using it in a more concentrated way and sort of tapping it out of the tail so I get lots of that sparkly shimmer. Some of it I'm adding over exactly the same spot where I sprayed it to begin with, or painted it, I should say, and spreading it out with my water brush. And other areas, I'm just flicking it on so it's concentrated spots. It really does amp up the sparkle and make it look beautiful. And lucky last, I'm going to add a little golden fluid acrylic in a beautiful gold color. And I'll put this in the information in the contents as well. So you've got the color right there. So you can go and buy some for yourself. Now this is iridescent bright gold and it is beautiful and I'm just adding it with a very small paintbrush. Now I'm accenting some of the circles, I'm using it to add a few doodles, I'm using it to sort of go around the edges of some of those watermarks. Just add it as you feel you would like it uh, and it just adds this beautiful touch of glamour and touch of metallic shimmer. It's really pretty. Now, to make sure this lasts the distance over the few years I plan on using it, I've taken this outside and given it a brief spray with some gloss varnish just to set all of those colors and the mica because I don't want that coming up on anything. And because this is on gesso, sometimes that can happen. Thread that central elastic back through the middle and you can see I've got a few marks of color on the inside. I actually kind of love that a lot. Now, you could be way more careful than me, um, but... That really doesn't bother me at all. In fact, I think it kind of adds to the charm. So once you've slid the inserts back in and put that last elastic band around the middle of your cover, you're finished. And I think you'll admit it looks beautiful and bold and sparkly and so much better than white. And as promised, this is dead flat. You won't have any trouble sliding it in and out of any bag you like. There's nothing to get caught, but it still looks interesting and beautiful and complex. I don't think you'll get bored with looking at this for quite some time. Each of those steps by themselves were very, very simple, but they build up to something gorgeous. And you can see when you rub your fingers over it, you're not losing any of that color or any of that shimmer. So I hope you've enjoyed my five ideas for decorating a notebook or planner cover. And I hope you make your own. I can't wait to see what they look like. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love you to give me a like. And if you'd like to see more from Sparkle Tart, subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a product list below the video in the description. And you can connect with me via YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, or Google+. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.